Justu Salipowskiego like do wygłoszenia um, referatu optyczne monitorowanie jakości produkcji regarding optical quality monitoring and paving block production. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the findings of a research project that we, uh, as a research institute, did in the course of the last two and a half years. Um, there is some kind of lengthy title, I spare you, um, mostly uh, the, the thematics uh, are covered in the short title I gave you beforehand. The project has been funded by the German Ministry for Economy and Energy and has been done in cooperation with two partners in Germany. On the one hand, this is the German Berufsgenossenschaft, uh, who is responsible for workplace, workplace safety in Germany, and on the other hand, FCN as a big manufacturer of paving stones in Germany. These were the both partners in this project. Okay, so let me give you some short of a motivation. Um, we are talking here about the, um, the quality assurance workplace within the block uh, making plant. There we have uh, some kind of workplace that is, on the other hand, very physically demanding. As you see here, um, if blocks or, or slabs of concrete are not uh, to standard, they have to be uh, taken off and replaced. And uh, as long as these are small bricks, that is okay, but slabs as large as these, there has to be a worker that takes them up and put them in the junk, and this is quite hard work. This is the physical side. This normally can be, uh, those things can be altered by using some handling device. Um, therefore, the physical demands get less. But on the other hand, this uh, workplace is also mentally demanding as uh, the worker has to uh, do the assurance maybe for a whole shift and um, there is a lot of um, the, there you have to check very many stones very very uh, uh, yeah, many stones and after two or three hours I think they all will look the same and you have to check for uh, some kind of uh, shape deficits and color deficits and this is okay as long as uh, these are some ordinary rectangular stones like this. But if you have to check this type of stones, it gets really demanding for you have to check the shape, you have to check the edges if they are okay, and the, also the color and the, the texture have to be checked to be match for the whole board. Um, this type of stone, this is, look, looks a little bit harder than it's really is. In real, these are just three shapes, as you see here. This, this one, this one, and this one. Um, so the shape checking is maybe okay, but uh, you also have to cover color and texture. As if we look at the same shapes, you can't take out one stone here and replace it with a stone here, as this one has a completely different color. So you cannot uh, replace every stone with every other stone. So um, our task in this project was to alter the physically and maybe, yes, mentally demanding or attention demanding process of manual labor by some kind of auto automated process so we wanted to, uh, we had to go for an image acquisition and image processing on the other hand some automated replace procedure this ever should be connected to a complete system 
with uh, the following task, uh, the contours of the, and the surface of the product has to be captured. Um, the interim storage or the replacement storage had to be managed, so the system always knew which type of, which kind of stones is had, uh, there were in the interim storage, and uh, the replacement product had to be uh, placed on the bore in the correct, on the correct position and in the correct orientation. Yes, and the whole replacement procedure should be automated uh, at last. So um, the the whole system had to be uh, compromised from three parts image capturing, image processing, and at the last, manipulation of the replaced stones. I would like to take you uh, uh, into all these parts and tell a little bit about our approaches and uh, the things we did in there, starting with image capturing. Okay, this is a little bit too light, maybe. I hope you can see it. We printed some kind of test specimen for this, uh, for this task to get the image acquisition uh, on the small scale right. Uh, 3D printing, color 3D printing uh, for the image processing, the scale normally is not that big kind of a problem. We can uh, work on, on little uh, mock-ups and then we can transfer this on the to the whole scale, as you see in a later slide. When we do the image, uh, image acquisition, we have three steps in the replacement process that uh, are touched by this. On the one hand, we have to gather information from, uh, for new stones or for stones that come directly from the block making machines. All the stones have to be checked. They have to be checked by shape, by color, by texture. Then um, we need to know which type and which uh, shape of stones we have in our storage with replacement uh, products and these have to be placed correctly on the board to uh, keep this uh, in, in full shape. So for each of these steps we have to do some different kinds of, or there are different aspects of uh, image acquisition. At first for the, for the measurement of new stones, there the texture and the color of the surface has to be measured, the shape of the border has to be detected, and at last, to do a replacement, we need the center of gravity of the stone. This all has to be calculated for each stone. Normally, one would think, especially the, the center of gravity should be always the same, but maybe there are some kind of, yeah, reorientation between the block maker and the, the quality assurance workplace. So there we have to uh, acquire this place also. In the second part for the replacement board, there we just need the surface and the edge detection and on the last, last one reorientation in the production board, we have just the edges. But overall, we have to do three types of image acquisition, surface or area here, edge and point at last. So now I would like to give you some insights to this, uh, to this processes. First, image processing for the whole area. Um, normally, we have to do uh, work on color and on texture. Color is <coughs> relatively easy, so there we can just take the, uh, the color values of, of the different colors, red, green, blue, and uh, sum them up in different histograms so we can compare the color of overall stones in um, relatively exactly bins. The next one 
this is a little bit harder as uh, we don't work on single pixel pictures pixels here we have to look at whole surroundings is uh, the structure or the texture of the surface um, just a little overview we can we will do a transformation this is should be grayscale <laughs> um, normally the picture will be transformed to grayscale so we get grayscale values for each pixel then we can do a differencing between the center pixel and all the surrounding pixels here so we get some kind of differences this may be reduced to the sign of the differences and if we multiply this by a given matrix we get a summation for each pixel or we get a sum for each, each pixel by the remaining parts of this matrix here and at the end we get another gray value picture but this does not include lightning or everything like this. It just uh, describes the, the texture of the stone surface. So this can be transformed into a histogram again. And these histograms may be compared between stones to answer the questions if those two stones are, uh, um, are similar in regarding the surface texture. This is a little insight into this uh, texture recognition. You can uh, select this area to be bigger. Um, there are some other aspects to be, to be respected, but uh, mostly this is the basis of the whole process. The next thing we have to do is edge detection. Uh, for the edge detection, normally, if you see this picture, one should think these are relatively easily detected, but we don't need this line. We need both. We need two lines, left and right, for each stone one. So we have to do some additional image processing regarding vertical gradients, horizontal gradients. Add this up, so we get to something like this. And on this uh, picture, the next problem is the shape of the um, uh, or the, the edge of the stones are not closed. We have either after some sophisticated image processing, you don't always get closed shapes. So here at this stage, there comes an additional step of contour recognition or contour matching. We're taking the contour that are stemming from the products database and try to match this onto this products. So we get the exact position of all those uh, stones of the same shape. The last one, um, image processing, finding the center of gravity. This is at the moment done relatively straightforward as we are assuming that all the stones are, have a constant height and no density gradients. Uh, so normally you can assume, and, and, sorry, and no convex forms. So normally you can assume the center of gravity lies at um, the, the point with the largest, um, uh, largest uh, distance from the edge. So there we can set up our suction device to uh, take the stone out and replace it with another one. Yes, so these were the approaches used for image processing of, uh, for the stones, for checking the, the stones. Uh, the next one is the connection to the whole system. We have here a computer doing all the image processing, image analysis, and giving the data of the whole uh, stone board or whole board of stones. Then this is connected to a control PC that is uh, doing all the um, yeah, control task uh, 
giving the user a feedback what the system is doing and also controlling the manipulation system. Ah, this one I have to do. Like this and the overall process works like uh, when a new board comes in here, we check it, we, we take a picture of it and do the initial signal processing, get our thresholds here from the, from the products database uh, and at this uh, stage, there is the decision if the stones uh, comply to production rules or if they are, have to be taken out. If uh, a replacement has, uh, has to be done, we use the data gathered here for a comparison with um, the stones stored in the local database and find a matching replacement candidate and this goes into the uh, into the replacement process a little overview of our um, replacement station at the moment this one is the boy is uh, this uh, board circulation system not a new boards uh, with stones enter here then every stone will be uh, measured and detected at this area also for your, every stone there will be uh, the data taken and stored in a local database then the replacement will be taken place here by the robot mounted here so um, if some stone is measured here to be inadequate uh, the robot takes it out from here, puts it into the bin, takes a new one from here that fits and puts it, put and fills the board so that it's, uh, that is uh, complying to the standards. In this area, we have the replacement stones. Normally, three boards should be enough uh, to f fill every missing stone here. Um, if this uh, storage runs empty, the last board has to be ejected and a new board has to be taken in here. So normally, uh, and, and the new board that is taken in here has also already measured here, so we have all the data of those stones. And then the replacement can take on the, in the next steps. This is the robot, a photograph of the robot. Um, this is, and we use a, a suction device to take the stones out and uh, replace it uh, with, with fitting stones. Yes, so let me come to my conclusion. Our system is working in uh, three, three uh, topics. First is the image capturing to get all the data from the stones. Then image recognition, comparison of stones, and um, detection of possible replacement candidates. And the last one is the uh, manipulation, just the, to take out defective stones and replace these by um, uh, fitting stones from the replacement boards. Okay, thanks for your attention.